I'm going to show you how to make your hierarchy in Unity go from looking like this to looking like this. Even if you have little experience in Unity, you probably understand how quickly the hierarchy window in Unity can become an unorganized mess. So I'm going to start with some simple but helpful tips on how to keep the hierarchy window clean. And then I'm going to show you some scripts that you can use to make everything look nicer and also speed up the organizing process. So let's start with organizing the sample scene here. This scene contains everything that you would typically find in a game scene. I added an object pooling system that just shows how unorganized and messy things can get. If we click play, you'll see that cubes and spheres just simply spawn with random sizes and you can quickly see that the hierarchy window fills up with all of these objects. I typically like to organize my hierarchy based on common systems and objects that I would find in all of my games. And if you can, I would start by throwing a group of objects into a common parent object. So I'm just going to create a platform object and this platform that we have in our game scene that's made up of all of these cubes, I'm simply just going to throw them into this platform object. So let's start organizing the hierarchy window. And I'm going to do this by adding headers. And by headers, I simply mean empty game objects that will just separate the objects within my scene. So I like to have one for systems. I also like to have cameras. My GUI. I like to have one for the lights, world, or environment, random old objects. And I'm just going to move them within the hierarchy window um, where I would like these to go. Now things look a bit cleaner, but I was never fully satisfied with headers that look like this in the scene. To be honest, they look kind of ugly. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a script to make these headers look a lot nicer. So the idea would be to create a empty game object, but instead of using some random characters to space things out, I'll put two forward slashes, like I'm making a comment in code, and then the title of our header. So something like this. So let's go ahead and create our script. I have a scripts folder, but our script actually needs to go into an editor folder. This editor folder can be anywhere within your assets folder. So let's go ahead and create the script. And we're gonna call this hierarchy header. So your script, when you open it up, should look something like this. I'm actually going to place uh, my code into a namespace. I'm going to call this namespace Nova Sloth. You can call it whatever you want. If you're not familiar with using namespaces, I'll leave a few videos in the description on what they are and why you should use them. So this will actually be a static class and we don't need anything from mono behavior and before i forget it's also important that we are going to be using the unity editor namespace and because we're not using anything from mono behavior we can get rid of these awaken update methods so we're actually going to need a constructor and in this constructor we're going to subscribe to the hierarchy window item on GUI action. In C sharp, an action delegate is basically a callback that we can assign a method to. And so in this case, I'm actually going to assign a method called on hierarchy header. So we don't actually have this method defined, so let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to create a private static void on hierarchy header. And in our method, we're going to have the parameters instance ID and a rect. So in our method, we actually need to grab the game object that we create in the hierarchy. So we'll use the instance ID to object with the instance ID parameter and we'll typecast it to a game object if possible. So our game object, again, we're going to use the editor utility method called instance to ID object. And we're actually going to use our instance ID parameter here. And we are going to use the as keyword to cast it to game object if it is possible to do so. If not, we'll get null. And because it's good practice to actually make sure we have the game object and that it's not null, we will do a null check. So if game object is equal to null, we're just going to kick ourselves out of this method. So next we need to check what we name the game object and if it has the forward slashes that I mentioned earlier. So at the top of our class, I would like to define some constants that we can change in the future if we want. So I'm simply going to define a a constant string called header starts with 
and it is going to be the forward slashes. And I'm thinking ahead a little bit here, but we want to change the color of the header object in the hierarchy window. So I'm also gonna define a static variable color called header color. And I preferably want it black, but you can obviously change it to whatever you want. So now we need to check if our game object's name starts with our forward slashes using our new constant variable. So if our game object name, and because it's a string, we can call the starts with method and we're going to use our header starts with variable. We're going to use our string comparison operator and we're going to do ordinal. For context, I'm using the ordinal sort rules simply for performance, but it's honestly not very important. I have a link in the description to the Microsoft documentation on sort rules. So if we do have a game object that is a header, we need to set the color and set the text. Setting the color is actually pretty simple. So we're just going to use the editor GUI draw rect and then uh, pass in the rect parameter and then we will use our header color for the text to stand out because it's against a black background now we should use a drop shadow the unity editor has a drop shadow label so we're going to use editor gui again and we're going to use drop shadow label and so we need the rect's position and then for the text we're going to say game object dot name and we're going to use replace because it's a string and we're going to replace the forward slashes or whatever characters you have set to header starts with and we're going to replace that with an empty string and then we're going to say we want it to be uppercase this is a preference you don't have to do this but i think it looks cleaner and so that should pretty much be it for our on hierarchy header and so when we detect this action, when we create an object within the hierarchy window, it will call this method. So one more important thing to add, and I'm going to get rid of these system namespaces because we don't need them. But anyway, another important thing to add to the script is a conditional compilation. We only want this code to compile when we're using the Unity editor, not when we are building for the game. In order to do that, we're going to use pound sign if, and we're just going to in all caps specify Unity editor. And then at the bottom here, we're going to end our if statement. Oh, and I almost forgot. Top of our class, we'll need an attribute. This attribute is called initialize on load. Otherwise, our script will not work. And as you can see, the game object that I had created with the forward slashes has already updated to what we wanted it to look like. So now we have our fancy new headers, and I think the hierarchy window looks a lot more clean. Creating these headers manually for every new project is really annoying. So I'm going to show you how to automate this process with a toolbar menu item. So let's actually create a new C Sharp script in the same editor folder. And I'm going to call this setup headers. So again, I put my code in my Novasloth namespace. And we also know that this is a static class and we're not using anything from mono behavior. And we will be using the unity editor namespace so we need to define our method that we know is going to be called when we click our menu item from the toolbar so i'm simply going to call this public static method setup scene objects in order for this method to show up in our toolbar we actually need the menu item attribute the menu item attribute takes in a name which is actually a path that we want so i want my parent toolbar menu item to be novasla and then I'm just going to call the actual menu item we click setup. If we go back to our Unity editor, we should see a Nova Sloth menu item and our setup menu item. So in order to keep our script clean and maintainable, I actually want to define a helper method that we will use to simply pass in a list of the names of our header game objects that we would like to show up in our hierarchy window. And this method will handle creating all of those for us. So let's define a private static method. And we're going to call it create game objects. And in this method, we're actually going to take in a list of strings. So I'm going to use the params keyword and we're going to call these names. The params keyword allows us to use a comma separated list instead of having to define an array. And so for every name in our names array, we actually want to create a new game object. 
we actually need to call it the name but also we need uh, the characters that we defined in our last script this next statement is not required but i'm picky and paranoid so when we create this new game object in our scene i want to set its position at origin so i'm going to set the transforms position at zero so game object dot transform dot position equals vector 3.0 let's call this method with the name of the objects we wanted to create in our scene so i'm going to have systems cameras gui lights and objects and so again i'm going to get rid of these systems namespaces that we're not using so i only want it compiled if i am in the unity editor So let's hop over to our Unity editor. I'm going to remove our old header game objects. And I'm going to call setup. And now we have those headers automatically created for us. And one last thing, if you remember, I talked about this object pooling system. And you'll notice that when the objects are created, it's all created within the hierarchy window. And I mentioned that it's important to place objects into a common parent object so that way your hierarchy stays a little bit more organized. So you can actually do this within your own custom scripts like I have here. And you'll notice that I have a parent transform serialized field here. And all I have to do is create parent game objects and we'll call this spheres. And I'll create another one called cubes. And because I have it scripted, I can throw these parent objects in here and everything all the spheres will be created under the spheres parent and all the cubes will be created under the cubes parent so I have all of these spheres here and then of course all the cubes here but my hierarchy window still looks clean and is maintainable which I think is very important when you're building complex systems and games hope this video helped you out and if you would like to see more of these videos please let me know also i'm going to upload this project to github so you can go to the repository and look at the code yourself and i'll see you in the next video